um, basically what 2019 looked like for me and how we added um, six figures of revenue, add a lit up life, um, how I pulled back on the work, what that looked like. Um, if you saw me share about it earlier, what I said I wanted to tell you guys about was like the actual process behind that because I think it's so easy um, to hear things like that and it get it get me to seem so, so, so easy. I'm like sure there were parts of it that were, were very easy and we'll talk about those too, but I also just want to like be really transparent with you guys about what that looked like and what's true. You know, I love nothing more than um, a behind the scenes look and I feel like I'm constantly giving you that um, for my clients um, in terms of the happy thought show. I'm constantly giving that around my own self growth and self development and, um, you know, just always trying to show you the, the, backside of everything, but I think, um, you know, I so rarely take the time to sit down and do it in terms of a lit up life specifically because I'm so focused on like sharing uh, clients and, and sharing, you know, kind of like the more personal behind the scenes for happy thoughts. So I'm excited to have this conversation with you guys today. Um, hey guys, thank you for being here. Hey, Caitlin. Hey, Al. Um, so let's talk about this. So um, last year we added yeah, over six figures of revenue. So we are, um, you know, well over the half a million dollar mark in business. And um, I'm just so proud of that because I feel like the one thing I've done on this journey that I just like, I'm so grateful to myself for is to just always do it my way and to not chase a number. Um, I feel like a lit up life is at the point where we could easily be a multi-million dollar business. Um, I also feel like I know <laughs> all the strategies to make that happen, right? I have like multiple clients that are there. Um, I've helped a lot of people scale to that quite quickly. I mean, so many of my clients just had such big gears, had such big um, things happen from like Forbes features to TED Talks to hitting their first million dollar year to hitting their first multi-million dollar year, like all of that's true. And, and I'm so, so, so proud of them. Like there's nothing in the whole world that makes me happier to be quite honest. But what I'm so grateful for myself for is that I've always chosen to do it in the way that feels best to me and to not make it like a race to a finish line. What I've always thought about business like what I've always thought about my business around is that it's really about like, do I enjoy the journey? Because what happened for me is in, um, it, when I worked in the like corporate nonprofit world and even in college, like it always was a race to the finish line. Like I had to get two master's degrees, you know, as fast as possible. And I had to get straight A's and I had to get the dream job as quickly as possible. I think it, um, I got like four, no, I got six promotions in one year. <laughs> at uh, my job. So I was basically getting promoted like every two months, I think, for a period of time or like every three months or something like that. And like I just was always chasing the finish line and I'm really good at getting to the finish line um, because I'm a high achiever, I'm a higher performer like so many of you. Um, and what I just like endeavored to do differently in this business when I left that was to always make it about enjoying the journey and enjoying the process. And I'm just so proud to say that like we have fully scaled in that way. And so that's just a mentality I'm trying to share more of, which is that like you can have whatever it is that you want. Like, you know, like nothing's wrong with running to the finish line really fast if that's what feels best for you. And nothing's wrong with doing it your own innovative way and, um, <clears throat> you know, like doing it in a way that feels good for you, even if it's totally off the beaten path. Like in the only person who's ever scaled one-on-one -on -one like this. And so um, that's that's like permission I had to give myself. Like I know that that sounds like a little bit funny to say because I think so many people are like, oh, I want to find something like I can do that's super innovative. But like there's a, a dark side to that in a way, which is that you have to give yourself an absolute epic fuck ton of permission to be like, and it's okay that I'm the only one that does this. And that doesn't mean I'm wrong. And that doesn't mean I'm doing it wrong. and um, so anyway, that's just a little backstory on like why we're here and how proud of um, a little life I am to just be uh, sitting at that point in our business where we can say like, you know, we're we're well over the half a million dollar mark and just have fully and completely done it our way. And the second thing I want to say about that is we keep most of our profit. 
that is so wildly important to me um, because I've just seen so many businesses where like the revenue numbers look good, <laughs> but it doesn't mean the business is operating real good or it doesn't mean people are taking home a ton. And I just can't stress that enough. Um, I probably take home just as much as a lot of, you know, million dollar businesses because of the way that I run my business and because, um, you know, of how our structure and our model are, are set up quite honestly. And so that's something I want you guys to know and consider too. And that I will talk about a little bit, um, in this kind of like behind the scenes look, which is like, make sure you're profitable and make sure you're looking at profit. Now, was there a time in my business where I was investing more than I was making? For sure. I think every business has that. And I think like, that's okay. I'm not saying like, you must be profitable from day one forever and ever. Amen. But I am saying like, it's something that we don't take seriously enough in this industry, in my opinion, um, which is actually how much you're taking home, because that will be the greatest impactor of how the business impact or influences and impacts your life. So when I'm saying like, do it in a way that feels good, like if you're doing it in a way that like gets you a high revenue number, so you can say you have a high revenue number, but you're not getting to take home most of that, that's not necessarily doing it in a way that feels good to you. That's just doing it to fucking prove something. And like, I feel like most of us learn the lesson the hard way. I know I sure did. Um, in previous uh, jobs and positions and whatever, that like doing shit to prove something, it's like always a bad idea. <laughs> so, um, really be making sure your business is serving you as much as you're serving it. And that includes profit and that includes what you're taking home. So a um, little backstory on that, but we'll get into a little bit more of that. I'm going to go through some points for you that like really allowed me to scale this year that allowed me to take that revenue home that um, allowed me to work even less than I have and what all that looks like. So uh, let's get on into that. Hey guys, if you're here, say hi. Thank y'all for being here. Um, hey, hey, hey. Okay. So let's, hey, Amy. Hey, Julianne. Um, let's, let's dive into the first point. So one of the, the number one ways that I was able, um, to do this is just having a team and being a really great leader to that team. So, um, I feel like a lot of people see team as an answer, and it totally is. But what a lot of people don't see is that their leadership to that team will impact everything. Um, I think so many of us come into this space without a ton of um, knowledge or experience on leadership. Personally, I was actually lucky in the sense that I led a, a, quite a big team, about 40 people um, in the nonprofit space. I also, uh, my MBA has a focus in leadership. So I had a ton of um, experience coming in and I still had so fucking much to learn about being a leader and leading my own team and my own business and being a CEO and what that meant. And I just can't share enough how it's not just about having the team. It's about being a great leader to that team that will ultimately get you the best result. Like I try very hard to show up as a great leader to my team. I try to always be learning about that. I try to always be growing in that way. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, Amy. Hi, Julian. Um, and it, it makes all the difference in how they want to show up for me. Like I feel so supported by my team, but I make it my fucking life's mission to make them feel so supported too. Um, and I, I just cannot stress enough how that has changed the game for me. Like I just, um, my, my millionaire makers mastermind that I run, they get, um, a call with, me and my CEO, Megan, once a month. And we just gave a long um, talk about team and answered all their questions on team. And what I was saying to them is like, the one thing that I know, like, without a shadow of a doubt, is that Megan has my best interests at heart and um, is always trying to do her best in our business and is always going to show up 110%. And the reason I know that is because I also pour into her is because I also will show up for her 110% because she knows if she needed anything from me, I would drop everything in a second to make sure that happened. And like, I think that that's just such a missing component I see for people is they're not taking that team leadership as seriously as they could be. So the reason I was able to step back more than this year than ever is because I just trust my team implicitly. And not only do I trust them implicitly, I actually know 
that they fully care about a lit up life and our mission and our vision and our clients just as much as I do. Right. And it's taken time to get there and it's taken a lot of effort on all of our parts, but, um, it's just so valuable and it's something I work with so many of my clients on, especially as they're scaling past that six figure mark and beyond. Like so many of our conversations become about leadership because being able to have a team rallied behind you that like fully desires to show up 110% for you, support you, take care of things for you, all of that is absolutely invaluable. So um, like that's one of my biggest takeaways from this year and biggest tips is just to like show up for your team so fucking big because they will do the same for you and that will change the trajectory of your ability to not only scale but to work way less when you're doing it because they are so present and there for you and in your business and so cannot stress that enough like and it's normal if leadership feels hard or challenging. Again, I came in with a ton of experience and I still have so, so, so much to learn. It's one of the main topics of conversation uh, for a lot of my clients. And so it's okay if that feels hard, but it is such a game changer in your ability to scale and get results. So um, if you are looking to grow more this year, I cannot stress enough how being a great leader to the team you have will be a difference maker in that. Hey, Maggie. Okay. So the next thing I would say that really contributed it contributed to us just constantly being able to add six figures is to just focus on what works. I feel like if I see one thing holding people back in the online space all the time is that they're just constantly bouncing from thing to thing. They're launching this, they're launching that, they're doing this, they're doing that, they're trying this strategy, they're trying that strategy. It's just all fucking over the place. The thing that we have done super well at A Lit Up Life that is helped us to add, um, I think we've added six figures of revenue every year for the last four years. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, I'm pretty sure we have, I would have to double check on that, but some measure of that, right? I, I'm pretty sure it's been six figures for the last four years. Um, the reason we've been able to do that is because we keep focusing on what works, right? Um, and and really doing a lot of the same things, right? Like, I know I'm a fucking exceptional one-on-one -on -one coach. I know I get people really, really amazing results. Um, something I'll even share more about on is like, we've played with all these iterations of like, should I, should I pull back on the base camp time? Like, what about on the content review? Like, I give my clients like very, very high level support. Like, there's nobody um, who is more present and um, in your business and supportive than me. And we've like played with different iterations of like, maybe that's a problem. Maybe I should pull back. But the fucking truth is it works. It gets exceptional results. There's always innovation to be done, but like I just have clarity on what creates the outcomes I want. And I focus very, very, very hard on those things, right? I'm not always changing things. I'm not going, well, yeah, let's just pull back on this. Let's pull back on this. Da -da. Because what I focus on the most in my business is getting my clients results, right? And I know that sounds cheesy and like an obvious thing to say, but I really want to talk about it for a minute because I just don't think most people do. Um, I think most people are focused on what grows their bottom line. And I always say like, I'm not just here to get myself results. Like my ultimate goal is to get you results, <laughs> right? Like, I don't just care if you buy my program. I care because it grows my business. I care if you buy my program and it gets you results, right? Um, and so, like, that is just where we've kept our focus and a lit up life is on what works really fucking well and what gets people epic results. And to be honest, that has been one of the biggest differentiators in us being able to add so much income year over year because my clients recommend us. My clients come back like, oh, my, like the amount of my resign rate is like 90% or something ridiculous like that. Um, because we get epic results. And then like <laughs> so many clients are just sending people to me constantly. Like we had to, uh, create a really long wait list in terms of that, which is like a great problem to have. And I'm so grateful for it, but it's like, this is why the business keeps growing is because we've kept the focus where it is. Like if we were just concerned about growing revenue, like I could, easily do that <laughs> like right but like I don't want to do that just for the sake of growing revenue I want to grow revenue when I know it gets client outcomes and like 
this gets confusing in our industry, right? Because everyone's like, yeah, but they have to show up. They have to do this. What about this? It's their responsibility. And I agree with all of that, right? But when you found something that really works, keep working that, <laughs> right? Don't then go off and do 500 other things. If you're like, wait, this program, people are getting like really amazing results from, they're converting really well, they're uh, super happy, they're having amazing outcomes. How can you grow that program? How can you really add value there, right? Don't just take that and go, that was great, they got results, so what else? Like, Keep your focus on client outcomes and keep paying attention to that because if you continue to get enough people, enough results, I promise you your business will grow itself. <laughs> I, like, I, I literally cannot reinforce that enough. If you get enough people, enough results, there's some like Zig Ziglar quote like that too, right? Like if you help enough people get what they want, you'll get what you want every time. Something like that. Does anybody know what that is? If you know what that is, share it with me. But it's true. Um, and I think we just take that so for granted in the online space. Where what we're most focused on is that like one launch, that one thing, and do we get the results from it? And the question um, we need to keep asking is like, what are the results on the other side of that? Because if you keep getting clients amazing results, you don't have to do shit at that point to grow your business. And I'm not saying like let off the marketing or whatever necessarily, but I am saying like it all flows to you. It just does. Your credibility goes through the roof. So that's what we continue to do in the Lit Up Life last year. Like, I mean, our client results were just fucking epic last year. If you guys have been following us, we share them every week. But I mean, I, I don't even know what to say about them because I'm like so blown away by them. But, um, you know, the, the extra 100K in revenue, like, let me think of how I can pick, put this for you guys. So think about this, right? I charge $12.50 a month for coaching. Okay. I have one-on-one -on -one clients predominantly. I also have a mastermind for millionaire makers and I have value centered sales. Uh, value centered sales is 1997 for three months. Um, you know, like I do not charge exorbitant prices, but what I do do is charge, um, 10% revenue share. So think about that. Like we've scaled to over 500 K only because we get clients results like that 1250 a month ain't getting me to 500 K. You know what I'm saying? Right. So like that is so epic in my opinion. Like I'm so proud to tell you my income goal, not because it's the, or my income, not goal. What am I trying to say? I'm so proud to share with you my income from last year, not because it's what I made, but because it's indicative of how much we're helping clients make money. Right. That means what like clients made probably over, you know, I don't know, $4 million total. Some people are grandfathered in. I have the masterminds, whatever. So like, you know what I'm saying? Like we have helped clients make so much money and that's why we continue to make money. Like when I make money is when my clients make money. It's as simple as that. And some people are paying me a lot of money at this point because they're making a lot of money. But that feels so fucking good to me. Like when a client, you know, whatever, sends me a $6,000 payment for that month. Like, I'm not like, oh my God, this client's paying me $6,000 a month. I'm like, fuck yes. <laughs> because 5,000 of that came from the fact that I helped them make 50, right? And it's only new revenue. So we're not talking about someone came to me making 40, they jumped up by 10 and then I get all of that. We're talking about new revenue since working together. They made an extra 50K that month. Like, that is fucking awesome. But what is more awesome about it is that it's outcomes focused and it's client results focused. That's why we continue to grow and make money. So I just will get off my soapbox about that one. But like, I really cannot stress enough how important it is to be making sure that you are focused on client results because not only does that grow your business with like more ease than you could ever imagine, but you're also going to feel really good when you're receiving that money too. Like when I receive the big client payment, I'm not like, Ooh, I don't know. I hope they're going to get results for this. I'm like, I'm getting that because I know they're getting results for this. Right. Um, another thing is just, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, is like do what lights you up, which is obviously very obvious and sounds very cheesy, but I want to seriously talk about that for a minute. Um, so one of the things that we did uh, last year was added, literally, 
to our, our business basically. Right. So, um, my podcast was the thing that we added in, uh, 2019 and like, I could have had a podcast before that. I had played with having a podcast before that. I thought a lot about having a podcast before that. And there was just never something that lit me up enough to make me want to do that. Like that's advice I give to all my clients that want to start a podcast. I'm like, okay, well, a podcast is a lot of work. What, what is lighting you up enough that's worth it for you to put in that work, money, time, energy, and effort? And I like want them to have to tell me, <laughs> well, here's what's lighting me up enough to make that worth it. I literally just had this conversation with one of my clients last week. Um, and so for me, like I waited until an idea for the podcast came along that lit me up enough to make that worth it because everything has trade-offs, you guys, everything. Like everyone thinks like, oh, I'll just run a podcast will be so easy. No, there's like huge trade-offs to that. Like I do seven clip-ins a week plus an intro. Um, so I'm recording eight thing, eight clip-ins per week. Plus I'm recording the actual coaching session. Plus I have to, um, review show notes. Plus we pay for editing, which is very expensive because it's clipped in like a million <laughs> places. Um, I could go on and on, right? Like that is not a zero commitment thing that I got into. Um, and it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily an easy thing, nor was it easy m mindset wise in terms of, um, putting myself out there that much and whatever. But that idea, when it came to me, like it lit me up enough that I knew it was worth all the trade-offs associated with that. The money it would cost, the time, the energy, the effort, whatever, worth it, worth it, worth it. So keep picking those things that light you up and stop looking for the things that don't have trade-offs. For example, I have a predominant focus on one-on-one. -on -one. You guys know this. I've just talked about this endlessly. I just love one-on-one. -on -one. Guess what? It lights me up to no end. Also, guess what? There are fucking trade-offs associated with that. Like, I'm probably talking to people and in front of the computer more than most people. I am, you know, have a pretty strict schedule in terms of like, um, you know, I have to be there for client calls and stuff, right? Worth it, worth it, worth it, worth it, worth it, right? And so you have to be, find the thing that lights you up enough that the trade-offs are worth it. Like, even my clients that do... Um, that predominantly sell courses. Like, let's not pretend that's easy. A course launch is is a lot of work. Creating a really magnificent course that like actually really helps people and gets some results is like no fucking walk in the park. Like that takes time, that takes energy, that takes effort. Right? So you have to pick the thing that lights you up enough that it's all worth it. If you spend your time looking for the thing that doesn't have any trade-offs, you will be looking for a very long time. <laughs> Because it all does. It all does, right? Um, I could go on and on about the different trade-offs that all my clients have to make at certain points, but it's not about that. It's about picking something that lights you up so much that it doesn't matter, right? Like when people are like, oh, but you must be on a lot of one-on-one -on -one calls. I'm like, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Like it barely crosses my mind. Like it lights me up so much that it does not feel like this burden I'm carrying around, right? So Picking something that lights you up isn't just this like airy, very fluffy, beautiful thing. It's like a very concrete, strategic, and practical thing because if you do that, you're likely to show up for it, get results, have huge consistency, whatever. If you don't pick something like that, the likelihood that you show up for the trade-offs, that you show up even when it gets tough, that you're happy and excited every day when you show up is just slim to none, right? So last year when we added literally, and, and really in anything I do, it's about looking at the trade-offs and being like, but does it light me up enough that it's worth it? Because if the answer is no, I'm a no every fucking time. <laughs> because I've just seen too many people be like, well, yeah, sure, okay, I'll try it even though it doesn't light me up. It seems like it would make me a lot of money. And I've just watched that crash and burn, right, in this industry. And I'm just not willing to do that. Like I want to have a business for years and years and years to come. And so that requires me picking things that really, really, truly light me up. Yeah. Get me? So important. Not just like a woo concept. Very fucking important if you want to keep showing up. Um, okay. Uh, what else do I want to share with you? The next thing that I want to share with you is patience. So um, when we first started 
doing the, um, the revenue share process. Like it's new revenue only on so many of my clients. Some still are, but mo most at that time were grandfathered in where they didn't have a revenue percentage. Cause like whatever you come to me at, I keep you there for as long as you stay with me. Like I'm not like surprised my prices went up cause I fucking hate that shit. Does that make sense? So anyway, that was such a fucking long-term play. <laughs> like I knew I was not going to see the fruits of that labor for months to I, literally months and months to come potentially because it was all new and we had so many people grandfathered in, et cetera, et cetera. We finally came to a point in our business like a year later in 2019 where like that was really picking up, right? Like we had enough people that weren't grandfathered in at that point. We'd been working with people for long enough that that revenue bump really started happening. You know, we were starting to see, um, you know, five figure months from that, et cetera, et cetera. Right. But it took time to get there. And I just can't stress patience enough. And I, something that I see so infrequently in our industry, um, is just having patience for something to play out and work. Um, whether that's a course or here, here's another example. One of my clients just launched a course for, um, a second time and just absolutely fucking crushed it compared to the first time we didn't change anything about the course. We just learned a lot from the first one and applied it to the second and we're patient enough to see it through. Right. Um, and that's true of like everything great you're going to do in your business is like, it is going to require some level of patience, like being innovative, doing the new thing, uh, launching something for the first time, whatever. Like if you're like, I'm only in it, if I'm going to get results now, I mean, good luck with that, right? Like, I think some things do blow up and get results really fast, but I think the majority of things take a minute. And if you're not willing to be patient and play the long-term game in your business, you're going to end up getting rid of a lot of ideas that could have been the thing, that could have totally changed the trajectory of your business, that could have um, really just, like, made the biggest difference. Like, at, from back when I had the idea about having – the partnership, um, and running that in God, 2017, maybe I think 2017 to now where it's like a fully integrated part of my business model. It makes us the absolute bulk of our income, et cetera, et cetera. That was like a year's thing. Right. But if back then I had been like, Oh, that was cool to try one time, but what else, what else, what else, what else I would have missed the thing that's bringing in like hundreds of thousands of dollars to my business right now, right? And so I'm not saying it has to take you years, but I'm saying that like if you are expecting that everything's going to be like a one and done kind of thing and give you the best, most amazing results, like it, it's just not true. Everything is compound effect, right? Um, like even our podcast, like our downloads have grown and grown and grown and grown and grown. Our listenership has grown and grown and grown over the course of the whole year. Like that was a long-term play. That wasn't like, oh, we're going to do one season. We'll get as many downloads as we possibly can. It'll blow our business up and whatever. I'm going to have that podcast for years to come, right? Like find the things that light you up enough and then be patient enough to see them work. So for me, my business requires a lot of patience because the way the revenue uh, share model works is inherently it – grows over time, right? Because it's new revenue. So when a client comes to me, no matter how much they're making at that point, it doesn't really matter because it's just the new revenue that um, we generate. So it requires a ton of patience for me, right? Like I know revenue share will take us past the million dollar mark, but it's not going to be in the next three months. I don't care. I literally don't give a fuck because it's fun enough for me. It lights me up enough. I enjoy it enough. I know it gets amazing results. And so I'm willing to be patient and wait for it. And I just can't stress that enough. Like, and listen, I know that like when you're in a place in your business where you just need to make money and you just need to make things work, like I totally get that. I've totally been there and I'm not trying to make light of like, just wait on everything. But I also think that there's a way to have patience and get results. What I see most people do wrong is that they want the results so bad that they do a hundred things that they never fully see through, right? And then they're still in the same position where they're not getting the results that they want. 
So something that I work on all the time with my clients is staying consistent on one thing and letting that play out because I know it fucking works and I know it's going to work and it's hard for them because they're like, but I, I like, I'm, I need to make the money like right now. And I'm like, cool, cool. You're like right there, but you got to keep going. <laughs> um, and they're always mystified when it happens because they're like, oh my God, I would have given up a month ago. And now here we are. And like the clients are rolling in like crazy. Patience works every fucking time, every fucking time. So I just can't stress that enough. It has been one of the biggest, if not the biggest impactors on a lit up life success is not having anything to prove, not racing to that finish line and be willing to be patient while like our really good ideas grow and work themselves out. Um, <laughs> and then the last thing I'll say is a little more practical and strategic, but it's like actually know what's working. Um, look at your data. So when I'm saying like focus on client outcomes, like that's part of your data, but like look at data at other things. Like one of the reasons I'm able to work less, make more is because we know what works in a lit up life now. Like we had something we were doing last year that we were putting money toward. And when we look at the data, it was like, this is just not, the ROI is not there. Like we gave it time to play out. We were patient. We let, we let it roll. And when we really looked at it, we were like, you know what? Like ROI is just not there. We totally took it away. Fine. Cool. Data. Data is your friend, <laughs> right? Um, I see so many people investing in so many things, but not really looking at like, is this actually working? What kind of results is this getting us? All of that kind of stuff. Something that we're so focused on in a lit up life is like only doing shit that works. <laughs> Something that I really am focused on with my clients is only doing shit that works. That's why they get really epic results, right? Um, and so that's just something I would say in your own business. Make sure you're doing shit that works. Like if clients are coming to you, know where they're coming from. from. Know what's converting them. Know what's making them say yes. Know what's making them start following you. Know what's making them get on that call with you, go to the next level with you. Like be freaking clear on what is working in your process and you will be able to streamline and delegate even more and step back even more because you know what works. If you're throwing a bunch of spaghetti at the wall and you're like, I mean, I don't really know. Like I know we're on Pinterest some and we're on Instagram or on Facebook and I'm not really sure. Um, people just kind of come to me and I get calls and whatever. No, 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 no. Right. We need to know like what, which, like what on these channels is working? What is the data saying? Like what's actually bringing us the leads? And then like, can we keep doing that? Like something I'm so, so, so driven by is to do shit that works. And then when you figure out what it is to double down on those things. Right. So, um, you know, for me, when I was like, whatever, one-on-one -on -one works really, really well. We're going to keep doing this. Or even this Facebook community is a great example. This community works really, really well in terms of conversions and stuff. So we double down on this community every chance we get. Like um, this year we added, you know, community spotlight. I have gotten on live stream every fucking week <laughs> this for this whole last year. I mean, obviously I miss them from traveling and stuff like that, but like I show up every single day here. My team is in here every single day. Like we are doubled down on this because it works really, really, really well. And our conversion rate is super high. And so it makes sense. Like I could go on and on and other things that we've looked at that have worked and doubled down on, but it doesn't matter. It's the point of like, do you know these metrics in your own business? And are you actually looking at them frequently enough? I feel like so many people um, are not. Uh, if you... If you actually are confused about that, let me see if I can put this in here. Um, I'll put it in after. But um, one of my dear friends and um, just all around lovely humans, her name is Jen Gray Eben. Um, she runs a business called um, The Nimble Co. And she has like really like beautiful, reasonably priced uh, spreadsheets that you can buy. Um, to like hook up to your data, your metrics, and basically spit out really great data for you to tell you, or your platforms rather, and your um, your website, your metrics, all that kind of stuff, and to spit out data that's showing you like what's actually working really well for you and what isn't. Like these are things you need in your business if you want to grow and scale. Like what I think people think growing and scaling and adding revenue means is doing a bunch more things. And I can tell you after coaching so many clients into scaling, really, really fast. That is not at all 
what scaling means. Scaling means like getting really fucking clear on what's working, getting really fucking clear on what you can delegate, getting really fucking clear on what your best channels are for growth and then doubling down on those, right? So that's what we've done here. Like we just know what works. We look at the data, we pay attention to it, we act based on it and really like let that be a driver because you guys are telling us what's working when we look at that data. And of course we want to do what works instead of spending time or money on things that don't. And that is why we get to keep such a large portion of our profits because we spend it on things that work and we make changes when things aren't working. So that's why when I'm saying like, you know, we're making over half a million, but we're taking home most of it. That's why that's possible because of that focus, because of that patience and because of actually looking at the numbers and what's working and what's not right. Julianne says, really enjoy your lives and love literally. Oh, thank you so much, Julianne. That makes just makes my whole day. Thank you. Um, so, all I can say is that like this stuff has taken time for us, but it doesn't have to take forever. But like, of course, like making more and working less is something you have to be really strategic about. You do have to be an excellent leader. You do have to get really focused. You do have to be willing to delegate. You do have to be patient and let the compound effect um, take hold. And then you actually have to be looking at your numbers and knowing what's working and what doesn't. So not only are you making the money, but you're taking home as much of it as you possibly can be too. Those are the things by far that made the biggest difference for us last year. Um, and we're going to keep doing that in 2020. We're going to keep focusing on what works and paying attention to that data and those numbers so that we're making sure that the business is operating as effectively as possible slash also doing things that light me up because there is no finish line, right? Like I want to be doing this for years to come. Um, so making sure that, all of those trade-offs are worth it for you, that you're running a business that's fully in alignment for you and where you are and that it feels good. And so when you have to be really patient or when you have to get super focused or when you have to work on your leadership, all of that feels worth it because you're so excited by and lit up by the process. That's everything, you guys. Like, I just can't say that enough. Like, I feel like the luckiest, happiest most fortunate, most lit up business owner I know. And it's because those are the things I focus on. And I just feel like there's nothing more important than enjoying the journey, especially if this is something that you want to do for a very long time. If you're trying to make a million dollars in a year and cut and run, like that's a different, <laughs> that's a whole different thing, right? But if you want this business to be your livelihood for a long time to come, nothing will matter more to you than doing things that light you up so that the trade-offs are totally worth it and don't even really matter. So that is my lesson. I hope that was helpful for you. If you guys have any specific questions, super, super happy uh, to answer it. Y'all know I'm open to uh, giving more details on anything that feels relevant to you. So uh, feel free to ask. And thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for being part of this community. I mean, truly, like I, I am not kidding when I say like nothing lights me up more than being in this community and being with my clients. So just Thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for being part of our 2019. Thank you for being part of our 2020. I love you all and I will talk to you soon. Bye.